Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my method for creating easy ribbons in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to create together. We're going to start with a simpler ribbon first, just so you can kind of understand the process, and then we'll expand it to a more complex ribbon, which you see on screen right after that. So I'm just going to create a brand new screen size document, and then we will get going. Okay, I'm in my brand new document. I have a few colors that we're going to be using. Feel free to use any colors that you'd like, but I wanna share the colors that I'm using in case you wanna replicate it exactly. So down here are the colors that I'm using. You can always change the value of your colors by just hitting the value icon right at the bottom and I'm using the hexadecimal code it's just a little faster to plug in than individual ones and since this is on screen it, hexadecimal works perfectly fine so this is the darker purple this is the kind of grayish blue color this is the gray this is the almost white and this is the light pink. I also have a link to them in the video description, so just click there and you can have access to everything that's mentioned within this video. So we're just gonna get started by creating our ribbon face first, which is where you'd put your lettering or whatever kind of message you'd like to put on your ribbon. So we're gonna start with that first and then we will create the ends of our ribbons, we'll fill everything in and then we will make it more complex. So I'm going to select my lightest color right here because it's going to stand forward um, in front of all of my darker colors so that's why I always choose the lightest color for my ribbon face just so it stands out really well. I'm going to go back to the disc view just so it's a little easier and I'm going to be using a mono weight brush. Um, this is my free brush. You can click on the link in the video description. You can download this for free. So that is the only brush I'm using for this entire video. So it's really handy. I use it all the time. So in order to create our basic ribbon first. I always start with kind of a curved line. So it either starts from the bottom or it starts from the top. So if I start from the bottom, it looks like this. So it's going to start at the bottom and then slowly curve upward just like that. You can also make a straight one if you'd like, but I like the curved one. It just makes it feel a little more organic and has more of a hand-drawn feel. So once you decide which way you wanna go, you could also make it like this if you wanted. Either one is totally fine. So I'm just gonna stick with this first one that I drew. And what we need to do is duplicate it. So you're just gonna come over here to your layers and you can see this is on our layer one. So you're just gonna slide it to the left and choose duplicate. And now we have two of them. And in order to select the second one, you're gonna hit your little arrow cursor icon right here and you're just gonna drag it down and estimate the height of the ribbon face that you would like to have and that feels pretty good to me so I'm just gonna leave it right there and now what we want to do is just draw the lines in you can put these on the same layer because we're gonna end up merging all these layers together or you can create it on a separate layer if you want a few tries at it first I'm just gonna leave it on this layer I'm gonna return back to my brush which is my mono weight brush and I'm just going to draw a straight line down and in order to make a straight line you just draw it and you hold it and it'll snap straight for you you can also draw it and then just tap on the screen anywhere and that will automatically make it straight. And you just wanna make sure that they're totally connected. You don't want any gaps like right there because now we're gonna fill it in. So in order to fill it in, we first have to merge these two together. We don't want these to be separate anymore. So it's considered one shape. So you're just gonna tap on the top one and choose merge down and that will merge it with this one. You don't wanna merge with your background. So just make sure it's just what you've just drawn. And all I'm gonna do is tap on the circle and drag it right into the middle of my ribbon. And now I've got my ribbon face all colored in and if there's any spots that look a little rough to you you can go in with your eraser if you want and just kind of erase those away um, or you can just leave it the way it is so that feels pretty good all right so we have a ribbon face so now we're all ready to continue making the rest of our ribbon so for this ribbon I want to have my ends kind of come off down here and up here so what I like to do is just give myself a template that I can then color in and it makes it really fast and easy for me to do that. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, but I'm actually gonna drag it below this layer. So all you have to do is hold it and then drag it right below your first layer. Now I'm just gonna choose any random color because I want it to stand out and that way I can really see where my template is compared to the rest of my ribbon. So I'm just gonna grab a really bold color like this red orange right here. And I'm just gonna draw in how my ribbon's going to look and then I can fill it in and everything will go really smooth after that. So you just wanna make sure that you're on this brand new layer when you do that. And I'm going to draw it in. So when you have a bottom curve that kinda of comes around, you wanna follow the curve and then you wanna bring it out like this. 
and then draw your ribbon ends just like that. So that is the end of one of your ribbons and then I'm just going to draw a straight line down here just to close it off and that's part of my ribbon. You can use the same one if you wanna duplicate it and rotate it around or you can just draw your own. I usually draw my own just because it feels more organic that way and I really like that hand-drawn look and feel of my ribbons. So I'm gonna do the same thing, it's just kind of reflected. So I'm gonna follow this curve up, come around and then back over and there's my ribbon ends, and then just draw that straight line down to close it off. All right, so that's what my basic ribbon looks like. And now I can come in and basically just fill in the colors. So I'm going to create a new layer right on top of my template layer, and you can label this um, if I rename it template, just to keep everything super clear in my layers palette and I'm going to create that new layer right on top of it and now what you want to do is wherever there's the darkest area since this ribbon face is falling on top of this part of the ribbon these parts would be darker by default and then I'm going to fill the ribbon ends with just a darker shade of this gray right here so first I'm going to grab my darker color so this is my grayish blue color right here and I've got my mono weight brush, but I'm going to make it a little bit larger just so I can speed things along with filling it in. And what I like to do is just draw the outline of it. And since I'm below this ribbon face, it's okay for me to start underneath it. You won't be able to see it because it's underneath it. And I can just follow my template that I drew And you just want to make sure it's closed off. So even though I can't see it right here, let me turn off. If I turn the visibility, just uncheck this right here. You can see that it's a closed off shape. So now I can drag the color right into it and fill it in. And whenever you do that, most of the time you'll get these rougher edges, but they're really easy to kind of fill in. You just go back around them. Okay, so that part is totally done. And if I turn the visibility back on, you can see it, it feels really good right there, just the way it's supposed to. And you can also kind of toggle back and forth if you want to turn on the visibility of your template, turn it on and off and kind of see your progress as you move along. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. You can put it on a new layer, or you can leave it on the same layer and just have all of your darks on one layer, your lights on another layer. That's usually how I work. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, and now we can turn our ribbon face back on. And you can kind of see how everything's looking from far away. If you wanna turn your template on and off, just make sure that you're layering everything out. It's really important to keep separate layers. That way you can kind of watch your progress as you move along. Okay, so now all we have left are our ribbon ends and I'm gonna put those on their own layer as well. And these ones have to be behind this part that we just filled in the curve so i'm just going to tap on the template and then create a new layer because whatever layer that you have selected a new layer is always going to exist right above it so that's why i want this one underneath my dark area so i can even label this okay so i'm going to grab my kind of medium gray right here it's darker than my ribbon face and I'm just going to come back, make sure I'm on the right layer, and I'm going to follow the exact same process. So I've got my brush right here, and follow the template around. Okay, I'm gonna turn them back on, and I'm gonna turn off my template, and now let's take a look. Okay, so that's looking good, and if you'd like to add some lettering to the very top of it, you just wanna return to your layers palette, create a new layer at the very, very top, select your color. I'm gonna grab the darkest purple one right here since we have such a light ribbon face, and then just put your, your lettering right on top of it. Okay, and then the very last thing that you wanna do is just group everything together in case you wanna reposition it or rescale it later on. That way all of your elements that you've already created always move together as one. And in order to group different layers together, you just wanna select your topmost layer that's going to be a part of that group. And then all the layers that are also going to be a part of that group below them, you're just going to toggle them to the right just slightly. And you can see that they get selected that way. We don't need the template. We can actually just delete the template now since we've already used it for what we needed it for. And once you have your layers selected, you're just gonna hit these three horizontal lines right here and that will convert it into a group. And then I can 
just toggle this little carrot, this down arrow right here, and to close the group, but keep it all visible. We can rename this as our ribbon. And then if we wanna move it around later, all you have to do is with it, the group selected, just hit your cursor icon up here and now you can move it, you can rescale it if you'd like. You can do whatever you want. You can duplicate your group if you want numerous ribbons. Um, if you like doing bullet journaling, you can create different headlines with all of your headlines in ribbons. So you're just gonna toggle it over, duplicate, and then you can move it and now you've got extra ribbons and you can just change the lettering on each ribbon. So that's how easy it is to create a simple ribbon in Procreate. So now we're just going to follow the exact same method that we did for this one. We're just going to make a more complex ribbon and you'll see really quickly that you can use the same method for any type of ribbon that you'd like to create in the future. So I'm going to create a brand new document that's screen size once again and I'm going to move a bit quicker um, for the rest of this just so you can see how you can apply these same methods to something more complex. Okay, I've got my screen size document. I'm gonna be using the exact same colors just to keep everything really consistent right here. So the first thing we need to do, just like we did before, was to create that curve up at the top. And this time I'm going to go the opposite direction just so you can see how the ribbon looks a little different when you go the opposite direction with your curve. So I'm going to select my lightest gray right here. I'm going to make sure I've got my mono weight brush selected. And instead of going from the bottom to the top like we did before, we're going to go from the top to the bottom like this. And this curve doesn't need to be very severe at all. It can be very subtle, as you can see right here, and it's perfectly fine. That is really all you need. So once again, we just need to duplicate that curve and then select it, move it down, establish the height of our ribbon, and then we're just going to connect the ends. I'm gonna zoom in here. Okay, and once again, we want to merge these layers together so we can fill it in. So in order to do that, you're just gonna tap on the top one, choose Merge Down, and now we can drag this color right into the ribbon. So from here, we want to make this more complex. We're gonna have two ribbon faces this time instead of just one. So we can actually just duplicate our current ribbon. I'm actually gonna scale this down a little bit. This is a little big for me. Okay. So we're just gonna slide this to the left and choose duplicate. And then you're gonna hit your cursor icon and you're just gonna drag that top one down. And now you can stretch it out if you'd like or rescale it however you want, just to you know give a little bit of difference right here between the two. And that looks good, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. Now we've got our ribbon faces. So we can label these and you can once again label these, just tap on it and choose rename. Okay, so now we're gonna draw in our template just like we did before. So once again, create a new layer, hold it and then drag it to the bottom so it's your bottom most layer. We're going to choose a random color, so I'm gonna grab this red orange once again and now we're just gonna draw out. Make sure you're on this brand new layer. We're gonna draw out our template. So it's very similar to what we did before with the last ribbon. We're going to create our ribbon ends up at the top and the bottom, and then I'll talk about what happens in this middle part. So we're just gonna follow the curve around. And it's the opposite, obviously, this time, since we drew our curve the opposite. So in order to connect your top and bottom ribbon, you need to create a horizontal ribbon that is the same kind of width as these two. So let's first start down here with this point. So we're just going to draw it close to the middle or a little beyond um, our top ribbon. And then you're just gonna grab this bottom point right here and bring it at an angle as well. I'm gonna hold it so I can kind of adjust how wide it is and that looks pretty good. So that is how to solve that problem of how these two connect. And from here we can just fill everything in just like we did before. So I'm going to grab my darker colors, I'm gonna fill in this middle portion of the ribbon, these areas of the ribbon, and then I'm gonna go in with my darker gray and do the ribbon ends just like we did. So I'm gonna speed up the video, I'm gonna get those parts completed, and then we'll talk about some other more advanced customizations that you can apply to your ribbon.
Okay, so I've got the ribbon all set right here. I can turn off my template layer. I no longer need that. And another way to just further customize this is if you'd like to add in some additional shading to the darker areas. And the way that I do that, let me label this dark so it's really obvious right here. So you wanna create a new layer right above your dark layer. This is totally optional. You do not have to do this, but it's a nice way to show a little extra depth. We have this opportunity with these ribbons, the faces being on top of the rest of it to create that extra visual depth. So I usually create a new layer right above my dark layer. I'll grab the same exact color as the dark part of my ribbon, so this bluish gray color. And then what I'll do is I will change the blend mode right here. So I'm gonna tap on the end, I'm gonna change it to multiply. I'm gonna come over here and grab my soft brush. So it's under the airbrushing category right here. This is a default soft brush, everybody has this. So just grab your soft brush, return to your layers palette. You're gonna tap on your dark layer and you're gonna choose select. This will select only what's on your dark layer. And then this part's really important. You wanna tap on your top layer. So you wanna make sure this layer is selected after you created a selection of your dark layer make sure that this top layer is selected. So now whatever we draw on this layer will only fall on top of areas in the dark layer since it was selected. So I'm gonna grab my, my soft brush and then just lightly brush on top. And if it's not super obvious for you, you can change, you can change the size of your brush over here, but this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna shade this in and then shade this over here slightly and over here slightly. So you can kind of see as we go further back, let me release the selection by hitting this icon up here and you can see how that just pushes it forward a lot more with that extra depth. And now we're all set. And now you can just add in your lettering on top. So I'm gonna create a new layer at the very top. I'm gonna to grab my darkest color right here and then just grab your favorite brush. I'm gonna keep with my mono weight just to keep things consistent and put in your lettering. Okay, so now we can group our ribbon together just like we did with our simple one. So just make sure your top layer is selected and then you're just going to pull all of your other layers to the right. So they're also selected. We're gonna leave the template, the bottom layer off because we don't need it anymore. Hit these horizontal lines up here and now we have our group and we can close our group and now you can see we can move it around. Everything moves together. And the last thing that I also like to do, um, this is also very optional, is I'm gonna create a layer below this group and I'm just gonna add in some different foliage doodle details. So I'm gonna grab my light pink color right here, that's what I use that for. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush just slightly and I'm just going to draw these in. And if you'd like to learn more about creating these little foliage doodles, I have a video on creating really easy floral and foliage wreaths in Procreate. I'll link to that in the video description as well. Okay, and if you'd like a little extra contrast just to finish everything off, you can add in a background colored layer. I am going to create one right at the bottom right here and just fill it with my darkest purple and just drag that in. And now you can see we've got our finished complex ribbon. Nice and easy in Procreate using a simple template method. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com for even more design and lettering tutorials. And there's a bunch of freebies on there as well. And once again, hit the link in the video description. You'll have access to the color builds for all the colors that we used right here, the free mono weight brush, as well as a link to that easy floral wreaths and Procreate tutorial as well. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.